So Hebrews chapter 10, that's where we're in a camp. But tonight we're talking about connection, right? So if you've been here on Sundays, I've been talking about um, kind of pushing us forward to this mindset of fighting for connection. Uh, And so tonight we're going to flesh out what that means. And the next week we're going to shift and start a new series. Um, But tonight I just kind of wanted to lay a groundwork for this idea of connection. And so the main idea, the main point, the main thought that I have about this is that we as humans... Uh, more specifically, we as the people of God are better together. Ecclesiastes uh, verse four, chapter 4, verse 12. I forgot I had a clicker. This is so fancy. Is it going to work? Yes, it's going to work. Look at that. Technology is cool. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. Right? That makes sense. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And so when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about like a rope, you know, you got like a rope, you're holding a boat to a dock, you know what I'm talking about. It looks like it's braided, right? If you've seen the end of it and it's fraying, it's got like all these little pieces that are going out and then they're like braided together. So it's these cords that are strapped together and they're woven together and it makes it stronger, right? And then I was watching a movie the other night and uh, I heard a quote from Tecumseh. He was a, a Native American warrior And uh, he said, a single twig breaks, but a bundle of twigs is strong. And so I was thinking about this. I was like, look, you're like, duh, you got a twig. It's going to break. But if you got a whole bundle, it's not going to break. It's it's strong. You can't just like snap a whole bundle of twigs. So anyway, this idea of us being together, us being uh, connected is stronger than an individual, right? That is the idea. That's the mindset. So why do we need connection? Uh, I think one, we need connection because isolation is not healthy. Isolation is not healthy for humans. We're going to talk a lot more about that, but isolation breeds anxiety and depression. Um, We've seen across the board in our nation, around our world, the number of depression and suicide, all that stuff just skyrocketing because everybody was told six months ago, hey, go into your house and like, don't go anywhere. Like, do your best not to go anywhere. Um, And We're not going to talk about whether there's merit to that or not. We're not going to get into all that. But just the mindset and the idea of people not being connected with other people is not healthy, right? It breeds anxiety and depression. But connection brings joy, right? We saw it over and over again when churches were allowed to open back up, when people were allowed to go back and get together with people, joy, right? The first time you got back together with humans, it was like, awesome. Um, Sorry. Connection brings peace. Connection provides an outlet, right? We have all this built up uh, anxiety and frustration or, or excitement or whatever it is, and there's no outlet for it, but then we get together and there's an outlet, right? Um, and so connection builds unity. It's that same mindset of when we're together, we're stronger than when we're separated. Uh, togetherness strengthens. And so this is the mindset that we're looking at. So let's jump in. Hebrews chapter 10 Verses 19 to 25. The author of Hebrews says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so I backed up to verse 19 so that we could have some context. We need to know who the author of Hebrews is talking to here. And so he's talking to these people that have hope, right? Their hope is Jesus, Right? He calls Jesus the Redeemer, the Life Giver, the High Priest. And so he's talking to people who are followers of Jesus, right? And so 
If you are a follower of Jesus, you're a partaker of this beautiful grace that we're talking about, these gracious gifts, like people gathering together, uh, fellowshipping with one another. You're a partaker of the gift of Jesus as the Redeemer, the gift of Jesus as the High Priest. If you're not familiar with the Old Testament, we see this idea of a high priest, someone that the people had to go to in order to get their sins forgiven, right? They would go to this high priest and he would make sacrifices to God on their behalf, cleansing their sin. But Jesus is our high priest, right? We don't have to go to somebody for them to make a sacrifice on our behalf, right? We have Jesus. We can go straight to Jesus. And so if you're a follower of Christ, you have that gracious gift of Christ as your high priest. And so in this passage, he is talking to believers and he says, since they have a great high priest, since Jesus has offered his blood, now we can draw near with confidence to God, right? So since we have Jesus as our high priest, since we have Jesus who has offered his blood, now we can draw near and close to God with confidence, right? So if you're in this room and you're a believer, if you're walking with God, if you are in that family then he's talking to you about all the stuff we're going to talk about in a minute. If you're in this room and you don't know Christ, let me plead with you. We have a great high priest who has offered a free gift to you, a free gift of life. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had a perfect right relationship with God, right? And then they broke the law, the commandment of God, they sinned, and therefore all of us from then on have this sin debt. We have this sin disease inside of us. We are separated from God. We can't do anything on our own to get back to God. But Christ came to this earth and he lived a sinless life and he died a sinner's death on our behalf so that he could make payment for us. And I gotta tell you, if you're in this room and you're not a believer, if you're just like, man, I came because it was a good time, but I don't really get into all that Jesus stuff. Let me tell you, I want to beg you to believe, put your faith in Christ, because apart from him, we are separated from God. Apart from him, we don't have any of this joy, this love, this peace that I'm talking about tonight. We don't have any of that gracious gift. We are separated from God, destined for eternal wrath, apart from Christ. But This passage tonight is talking to believers. And so if you're in the flock, if you're in the family, um, he urges us to persevere, right? So if we look at verse 23, I think I've got a slide for that, maybe. Yes, in verse 23, he talks about perseverance. And so he says, hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. So essentially, hold on to this hope. Hold on to this this joy that we have. Hold on to this promise that we have in God. Trust the Lord. No matter how bad it gets, don't let go. We're going to talk more about that hold fast word in a minute. But don't allow the world to sweep you away. Hold fast. Persevere. Stay in the fight. And verse 24 and 25 He tells us um, what we can do to help that perseverance. This thing is not foolproof. Perseverance, assistance. So he says, stirring one another up to love and good works, right? Gathering together, not neglecting to meet together. He says, encouraging one another. And so when he's talking about stirring one another up, right? We don't just automatically like leave our house, most of us, and just desire on our own to do everything that God has called us to do that day, right? We, I'm speaking for myself, need people around us who can stir us up, push us on to love and good works, right? To do the things that God has called us to do. We need people to encourage us, to push us, to tell us, hey, are you coming to this event? Are you coming to this mission trip? Are you coming to do these things? Are you getting involved in that stuff? We need people to push us on to love and good works, right? We can get so self-consumed, we can get wrapped up in the things that we're doing that we forget about the things that God is calling us to do. And so stir one another up. Gathering together, he says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, right? We're seeing this right in our face right now. So we've been told like, We literally couldn't meet for a little while. And then when churches came back, a lot of people didn't come back, right? We've seen this. You guys have seen this. If you've been here, you've noticed like, hey, so-and-so, where's their family at? I don't know. So there's a lot of people who 
One, they probably shouldn't be here because they have some kind of insane health risk that if they come and they get sick, they're going to die. Like, it's just not smart for them to come. But there's a lot of people who just got used to the fact that we weren't meeting together. And they got used to the fact that they didn't have to wake up and put on normal people clothes to get out the door on Sunday morning. And there's a lot of people that got used to the fact that they had their Sunday to themselves to do whatever they wanted. And so it is their habit now to not meet together, right? And so they're going to their sports games, they're going to the grocery store, they're going to their family functions, they're doing all these things, but they're not coming to church. So it's their habit to not meet together, right? And so he says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. So we need to think about that. We need to think about the fact that he tells us that in order to persevere, in order to hold fast, we need to meet together as the body of Christ. We need to meet together as believers, gather together to worship together. And so he says, um, encouraging one another. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, just pushing each other on. And so just to summarize real quick, and then we're going to jump in a little bit to that hold fast word for a second and get some practical stuff out of here. To summarize, um, as humans, but more specifically, as the people of God, we are better together. That's just fact. We're better together. I don't know if I have a slide for that. Mm, yep. So, uh, connection is a human thing in general. Connection is a human thing in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Does anybody know what happened in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18? Pop quiz. What? Eve. That's right. God made ladies, right? Love it. Awesome. Married to one. It's great. So, God said, it is not good for man to be what? It's not good for man to be alone, right? So God literally created humans to be in connection with one another. He created humans to be together, to not be alone, or he would have just left Adam by himself and said, oh, hermits are awesome. Let's do this. Adam by himself, that's success. Nope. He created before the fall, right? Remember, this is before sin ever entered the world, God created Adam and Eve. He created humans to be together, to be connected, because it is a reflection of himself, right? What is the Trinity? Does anybody know what that word means? I got hands. Okay, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God is three in one. Way too complicated to break down tonight, but God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not three gods, one God, three persons, so all co-equal, co-eternal, one substance of the same essence, one God, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God exists in eternal, equal community. And so God created humans to reflect himself, and so we have man and woman created in the garden to reflect, hey, community is a good thing. Community is God's design. And so connection is a human thing across the board. So whether you're a believer or not, you need to be connected to people. That's just a general human thing. But it's also a Christian thing, right? We saw it all over Hebrews chapter 10, that connection is for the followers of Christ, right? We're called to strive for this holiness, we're called to strive for unity together. We're called to strive to be obedient to God. And we were talking about that perseverance. Um, he said this word, hold fast. And so I wanted to kind of zone in on that for just a second. Nope, not there yet. Okay. Oh, there it is. Look at that. All right. So hold fast. This word, hold fast, it means to endure. It means to persevere. It means to fight, struggle, to press on in other instances, this word in the Greek that's used uh, in English to say hold fast. So it was translated from Greek to English. In Greek, the word says basically to endure torture. So think about that for a second. When we're talking about enduring, when we're talking about persevering, we're thinking about this idea of going on in our Christian faith, of moving forward to be more like Christ. And then he uses a word like endure torture. So he's saying fight. He's saying press on. He's saying endure. It's not like I'm holding a balloon at a birthday party. It's like I'm holding on to a rope in the middle of a sea that's attached to a sail that if that sail goes flying, I'm dead. 
And so we got to hold on. We got to hold fast. And so endurance, perseverance, fighting, struggling, pressing on, that's what he's calling us to do. And so we fight and we endure and we persevere and we strive for that connection. So we're fighting for this connection. And so what in the world kind of connection are we talking about? Are we connecting to Wi-Fi? What are we doing? So let's talk about that. All right, so connection, connection to God, connection to the church, connection to brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what we're talking about tonight. So how do we connect to God? What? (laughs) Pray Bible Jesus. Got them all. Pray Bible Jesus. I like that. It's like a little... Pray Bible Jesus. Uh, So yeah, so we connect to God through prayer, right? Have you ever been in a relationship? I mean, any kind of relationship, not just guy-girl relationship, but like a best friend or like a parent or grandparent or boyfriend-girlfriend, just a relationship. Anybody ever had a relationship with another human, like just in general? Okay, so what if, imagine in your mind, what if you never talk to that person? Would that be a relationship? Like if you never talked to that person, like you never wrote them a letter, you never called them on the phone, you never texted them, no emails, no communication at all, zero. Is that a relationship? I need big head nods or big nose. Is that a relationship? No, it's not a relationship. We have to have communication in relationship, right? So we connect to God by talking to God through prayer. Prayer is when we talk to God, right? And then Bible study. Bible studies, God's talking to us because God has written his word. If you're here Sunday, Dr. Price preached an awesome sermon about revelation, general revelation, which is us seeing God in creation, God communicating to us about himself through the created things. And then you got specific revelation. Who remembers what that is? It's the Bible, right? So God gave us specific revelation. We have everything that we need to know about who God is, who we are, and how we are to live by this book right here. And so God has spoken to us. So when, we're, when we hear people say, I'm just waiting on God to tell me what to do. I'm just waiting to hear him audibly tell me what's going on. Hey, open your eyes, read this book. Like you got it right here. God's speaking to you. And so we need to be in the word of God. So we're in the word, we're praying. John said Jesus, absolutely, because Jesus is our, our access to God, right? He is our great high priest. And so connection to God through prayer, Bible study. What about worship? Right, so we connect with God through worship. Does that mean we only connect to God through worship when we walk in here or when we walk into the sanctuary? No, there's such a thing as private worship, right? Personal worship in our own lives. Our whole lives should be worshiped to God, right? Whatever you do on a daily basis should be worshiped to God. But you should also carve out time in your life where you can throw on some worship tunes and sing songs to God, where you can like write in a journal and just praise God and worship him through writing. Whatever works for you, you need to be doing that, right? We need to be worshiping God. And so we need to be praying. We need to be studying our Bible. We need to be worshiping. All of that is through Jesus. And so that is our connection to God. The second thing, connection to church. How do we connect to the church in general? Show up. That's a big one, right? We got to be here, right? So we need to be attending, right? You can't be connected to the church if you don't show up. So you need to be attending. But even more than that, So we got attending, but you need to be serving, right? So there is somewhere, something that you can do to serve the church. You're each and every one of you uniquely gifted by God, and you can serve the church. There's somewhere for you. There's something for you to do. Um, We connect with the church by being here, by serving. What about worship? What about corporate worship? So we talked about private worship and personal worship, but what about corporate worship in general? You got to show up to be there for that too. But what is corporate worship? What are we doing? What do I mean by that? You guys got to yell too, because it sounds like this right here. You're talking to me in Jesus is always the answer. Jesus is, always, Jesus is always the answer. But what do I mean when I say corporate worship? Somebody in the back that can yell through your mask. What? I can't hear you. I just see eyes. 
We're doing it right now, yeah. So when we're gathered together with the body of believers, mainly my mind goes to like church on Sunday. Finish the line, anybody? Kanye, no? Okay, so (laughs) what does it say? Something about Chick-fil-A, I don't know. So anyway, uh, my mind goes to church on Sunday morning when we're gathered together, what do we do? We sing songs of praise to God. We pray together. We open the word and we study it together. All of those things are what? Together, right? We're doing it together. We're worshiping together. And so when we're connected to the church, we are getting together with the body of believers and doing all those things together as a people of God. And that unifies us. It brings us together. And we're fighting for that connection. And right now, that means more than it ever has because we have to literally fight to be here. We have to fight through our our self like desires to not be here and the fact that, hey, it's okay to not be here because everybody says, hey, it's okay to not come because COVID. Um, and so we need to fight for connection. We need to fight to be here for worship. What about fellowship? What is fellowship? This word gets thrown around a lot. Fellowship is when we're like just hanging out and talking to other believers. Like, We're friends. We're having a conversation. We're breaking bread together. We're having a meal. We need to be involved with the church in fellowship. You don't have to get up in somebody's face and swap, you know, COVID spit. You can just have a conversation like on the phone or 10 feet away from somebody. Like fight for connection. Be creative. Get here and do that. Worship, fellowship, be involved, attend, serve, all those things. And then the last thing, Really quick, and then we're going to switch gears. Actually, the band, you guys can go ahead and come up. We are fighting for connection with God, with the church, and connection to brothers and sisters in Christ. And so this is monumental, right? So this is not just when you're here in this building. This is every week, every day, as a regular staple in my life, I'm reaching out to brothers in Christ and asking them, hey, encourage me. Hey, and I, I, I'm not literally asking them, but we're having conversations. We're talking to one another. We're fellowshipping. And so you have friendship with those people. You can hold each other accountable. So, hey, you weren't at church today. Where are you at? Like, show up. And so you can hold each other accountable. Like, if you don't have that, if you don't have that friendship, that relationship, that connection, nobody's pushing you on. No one is stirring you up, as the author of Hebrews said. No one's stirring you up to love and good works. And so, You got friendship, you got accountability, praying for and with one another. We're going to do that here in a little bit. Um, And then social media, like not a huge fan. I feel like it's a necessary evil at this point, but like being connected with people, fellowshipping with people through social media. Hey, are you coming to church today? Hey, how are you doing? Like all those things that if that's the way you communicate with people, use that, leverage that for the gospel. And then finally, calling and texting, like, I know your generation, like, doesn't call people and talk on the phone, because that's way too social and weird, Uh, but shoot somebody a text. Hey, where are you at? Hey, how you doing? Hey, Jesus loves you. What? I don't know what that means. (laughs) Give me a call, bro. I don't know. So, anyway, (laughs) what's going to happen now uh, is we're going to, if you don't have any questions for the QR code... um, I want you to reflect. I want you to think about, I just dumped a whole bunch of stuff on you guys about connection, about Hebrews chapter 10, um, and all that stuff. So we're going to reflect, and we're going to respond to that. And what that looks like is you can sing. You can stand up and sing these song, this song that they're about to sing. You can uh, come ask, look, there's adults like all over the wall in the back. You can come ask them a question if you have one. If you need to talk about this, um, they would love to talk to you. Um, And then after that, we're going to do the ask anything. And so I can answer your questions and then we're going to pray together. Okay. Does that sound cool? All right. Let me pray real quick. Father God, thank you for the night. God, I thank you for the author of Hebrews. Um, God, unloading just some awesome knowledge and truth on us. God, I'm thankful for Jesus and I'm thankful for these students. God, I pray that you would use this whole next section of our night to glorify yourself. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.